everyone. Welcome to Creative Cooking in Ani's Kitchen. My name is Ani. Welcome to my channel. I'm glad that you all can uh, have joined in to watch this video. If you don't mind giving me a like, subscribing, and hitting that notification bell, turn it on. That way, um, you know, you can be notified every time I upload a new video. And trust me, I promise you, you'll like my videos. Um, if you don't like one, you'll like another. There's a little bit of everything, something for everyone. And as always, because this is creative cooking, I encourage everyone to make it their own. If there's an ingredient you don't like, don't put it in. Put in what you do like. Make this your own, okay? I encourage that. This is all about getting creative in the kitchen and making something new, you know, to your liking. So let's go ahead and begin. Let me show you what I have. I have, what I'm planning on making is, um, we've all heard of cherry blossom cough cake. I'm not too big on a lot of cherries. I mean, I don't mind them, but I prefer the blueberries or strawberries. So um, I decided, uh, it was a toss up between the strawberry and the blueberry, I decided on the blueberry. Uh, my husband, uh, it's his favorite, so I'm going to go with that. Okay, so blueberry blossom coffee cake is what we're going to do. Um, what's different, what's going to be different with mine, it is going to be like a loaf um, type of knotted um, coffee cake. But I am going to do a coffee crumb on top. Okay, that's the difference. You don't have to. You can just do an icing. I want to do a coffee crumb. I probably would do a little bit of icing on top of that, too. <laughs> anyway, um, like I said, it's about getting creative. This is what you're going to need to make this delicious coffee cake, okay? You could use strawberries. You use pe whatever you want to choose as your fruit. Okay, you can. You go right ahead and do so. You're going to need two and a half cups of flour, all-purpose um, flour is fine. I use a mix between uh, all-purpose and bread flour, only because that's what works best in my area. I'm in Kentucky, and it works best under the weather conditions here and the temperature in my kitchen so that's what works best for me the yeast reacts better to it everything reacts better i get a better result so that's uh, the formula that i have come up with that works for me you do as you need to according to the climate in your area and where you're at and what works best for you so let me show you what i have here okay i have two tablespoons of softened butter. Just leave the butter out. Um, I have a tablespoon of lemon juice, you, only because I didn't have lemon paste, okay? You use lemon paste. I have uh, half a teaspoon of vital wheat gluten. I have a half a, a teaspoon of uh, salt, and this is Kosher salt, coarse salt. I have, um, what is this? I can't remember. Oh, yeah. This is two tablespoons of dry malt powder. If you have dry uh, milk, baker's dry milk powder, that's fine, too. Um, this is two tablespoons of powdered milk. Three tablespoons of um, potato flour or mashed potatoes, whatever, you know, uh, the flakes, that's fine too. One room temperature egg, oops, that's my salt. One room temperature egg and three tablespoons of sugar, cane, granulated cane sugar. Okay, what's missing here? And like I say, here's my flour. 
two and a half cups. What's missing here is the yeast, which you'll need two teaspoons. You can use instant or active dry. I'm gonna use active dry today with three quarter cups of warm water. I'm going to get that right now. So we're going to activate, I'll get our yeast activated and see how to get done. The water temperature should be at least 105 to get the yeasty beasties going and no more than 115, I would say, would be safe. So we need two teaspoons. So here's a teaspoon measure. So there's one and there's two of my teaspoons. I am going to feed it a little bit of azúcar or sugar. I'll just get a little teaspoon of that. Just put it in there. Okay. And we're going to stir these beasties up. Okay. We're going to get them shaking, rocking, and rolling. Oh, yeah, we are. So you just shake them up until you get a nice milky substance going. Okay. And then just push it to the side, leave it alone, and we wait. Let the beasty be, uh, yeasty beasties wake up, start munching, and give us what we need, which are the carbon dioxide, so the bubbles. Okay, so here we have our stand mixer. And we're going to start adding our ingredients. First thing I want to do is add my butter. Soften butter. My sugar. And my egg. Okay. Got those going. Let me get my. I think I'm gonna use my whisk attachment first, and then to whisk that up, and then I'll use my. Oh. My hook, my doll hook. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just lift that really well. Alright, before we add anything else to it. Go ahead and get you. Bird's eye view. Get 
on like a number four. Put in our plates, our potato uh, plates and flour. Okay. Put in our dry malt. Vital wheat gluten. And give this another good mix. And then we're going to switch. We're about getting ready to put in our flour, so we're going to switch to the dough hook. Show you things off of there. It is. Now we are going to put in a little bit of our flour. Okay. And a hook. Go ahead and give that a mix on a low speed. We're going to put in some of our yeasty beasties. And the rest of our flour. Okay. The rest of our yeast to beasties. Okay, the dough is forming. I'm going to go ahead and scrape the sides. Okay. And we're going to knead this until it becomes elastic, nice, pliable dough. Okay? So, I'm going to try for a good eight minutes, and I'll bring you back. All right, time's up. Stop this. Our dough should be ready. Okay. 
Yep, it's pretty smooth. All right. Whoa. Don't want that to come on. What I'm going to do is, I'm just going to bring it all together and then just let it rise. Uh, This thing just keeps turning my burners on. I'm burning my... Stand mix on the bottom of it. Okay. I'll check it in just a second. Put a little bit of oil on the bottom of this. And just so this doesn't stick. And I'm going to cover it. got my oven preheated preheated to 350 okay this is just warm and right now what I'm doing is making my crumb topping which is just half a cup of vanilla sugar half a cup of brown sugar uh, vanilla extract I'm putting in a little bit of lemon extract if you have blueberry extract that's even better and um, Half a stick of butter chopped up, cold butter, diced up into little pieces, and about three tablespoons of flour, and then just mix it up. You can do it with your hands, which is what I'm going to do, just like so, and you just break it up, okay, until it all comes together. That's all you do. All right, till you get your crumb. And uh, I'm going to let this rise. I'm going to try 45 minutes, and I'll bring you back. Okay, David. You are barred from my kitchen. Get out now. I'm leaving. That's my husband, you all, over here. Cussing, talking about get the hell out. <laughs> he knows better than that, speaking that language. Let your dog in, please. All right, y'all, it's been 45 minutes. I have a rise on my dough. I don't want it to rise too much just yet. We're going to, well, Put a little bit of oil on here. Hey, Goose, what were you doing out there barking? Huh? Barking this time of night. Out of my kitchen. You know man coming here. You and your father. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to oil a little bit our donut here. 
and get our dough out. It's nice and soft and fluffy. Alright. Oh, and by the way, the only thing that melted a little bit was one of the little round um, kind of span, leg stands, buttons. But it's fine. Not a big thing. Lord, I was like, what's going on? The mixer kept turning the knobs on and the stove. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I need 12 pieces. So, there's my pan. Okay. So what I'm going to do is roll out okay, the dough. Let's see. And then I need six. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, roll out the dough to about, a, I guess, Then we're going to cut it in half, okay, so we'll do half, and then we're going to do six pieces, okie dokie, so we're going to go in the middle, okay, and then three on each. Okay. And and if you're gonna weigh this, it's about fifty grams each. Uh, what we're gonna do is. Flatten it out. Okay, take a spoon full of your blueberry. Okay. And you want to put a spoon full of that and then close it up. Okay. All right, so then you're going to want to put it seam down. Okay. A lot more uh, blueberries than what I need, but that's okay because I'll make something else with it. Okay. side down okay okay that's two and we just go off from there so I'll bring you back as soon as we are all done okay okay I have my six pieces of stuffed or blueberry filled dough balls in here. So what I'm gonna do now is cover it and it's in this warm 
spot because I have the oven on. And we're going to let it rise for about 30 minutes. And I'll bring you back. Alright. 30 minutes are up. Oh, they have risen nicely. And now for the crumb. Oh. We're going to do the... Oh. Coffee crumb on there. All that butter in it. Now we're going to bake this 350 for 25 minutes uncovered and then slightly cover it for 10 additional. All right. So I shall bring you all back once it's completely done. Remember, 25 minutes uncovered at 350. Then you take it out, you slightly cover it, kind of like tent it, and with a piece of aluminum foil, and bake it for another 10. And then that's it. Voila! I may or may not do uh, an icing. I think I have some in the fridge. I just need to melt. All right, so here it goes into the oven. At 350, right in the center rack. Let me get some water on my water tray that sits at the bottom. Always keep a water tray at the bottom of your oven for your pastries and cakes and stuff and breads. Beastie Beastie love that steam. All right, so 25 minutes. And it's on. 25 minutes. Tick tock, tick tock. I'll bring you back. Okay, we have about two minutes left to go. And everything ready. Cool it. I'm very doubtful that Huffster's gonna wait until it cools down. Very doubtful. <laughs> so, This his bowl ready. Ah, one minute and a half left to go. Bring you right back. All right, so I've enough. Oh, I should have turned the time off first. I do this all the time. Remember. It's a trick to the seven. All right, let's take this. Oh wow, boy, that was that rolls up. Definitely a lot of butter on top. 
Look at that. Ooh, what a rise on that. That's all sugary butter right there. We're gonna let that soak back down in there and let that cool off. Isn't that a sight? Look how beautiful that looks. Oh, I hate when that happens, the color changes. Oh, look at that. Oh. Yeah, that is a beauty. Uh -huh. Ooh. All the nooks and crannies. Oh, it's ugly when it's away from that light. But that looks beautiful right there. You gotta you gotta give it props. So we're gonna let that cool off just a second because <laughs> Hubsa can't wait much longer than that. And I'll be back with the finishing product or the plate, presentation plate. Well, here it is, folks. Here is the blueberry blossom coffee cake. Isn't that beautiful? Yep, I'm a feed hubster, and just to show you, that's what the inside looks like. Isn't that beautiful? Uh huh. All right. Get a shot. Hold on. There it is, folks. Blueberry. Uh. Blossom coffee cake with uh, sugar crumb and icing on top. Make yourself some. It is a delicious recipe. Get yourself some of that gooey goodness. Oh, yeah. Gooey, gooey goodness. Look at that. Mmm. So good. All right, make yourself some. Give me a thumbs up, please. Like this video, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a new recipe. And until the next one, y'all, God bless, and take care of yourselves and one another. Good night.